Okay, after eight grueling months, I have stopped working for Mr. Beast. Holy f***ing shit. In this video, I give you an exclusive look into what it's like working at Beast. Uh. The hours, the stress, the, the plane rides, the travel, the winds, the fails. A true examination behind the curtain. I'm in Chile and I've got a new training partner. Let's go, he's gonna get jacked. This will be exciting. Perfect. But first, the reason I stopped working for Mr. Beast is because... Because I had a little baby boy. Meet Seth. Today is his one week birthday. So technically I've only stopped or paused working for Mr. Beast for the next month. Yes, subtle clickbait, but you can't get triggered when looking at this cute little face. Look. Look at this tiny nose. These eyes, hands and toes. So this is a how we do it at Beast. Everything I've learned over the past eight months combined into five secret, never revealed before formulas on how to make practically any video go viral. Even if you only have one subscriber. But before going back eight months, I have some really exciting news. Along with House of Max, I have developed my very own super tasty caffeinated bar called the Brew Bar. My first ever product. One of these bad boys and you'll be wide awake and alert for the entire day or night depending on what you use it for. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video but it's by far the greatest thing I've ever made and I'm super proud of it. Okay, so after finding out Gabby was pregnant on a sat phone in Antarctica, I flew back to South Africa and after 53 hours of grueling travel, I made it to my beautiful pregnant <laughs> wife. For a short trip, because I had to move to Greenville, North Carolina to start off my new position as Chief Creative Officer at Beast Philanthropy, which is a dream job, a once in a lifetime opportunity. So Gab's granted me three months, three months to fly there, set up an entire studio to make it possible to work from two opposite sides of the world. So I arrived at this undisclosed location that was fully kitted out, except for this room. One day later, with three brew bars down, it became a pretty rad setup, I'd say. This is where the next eight months of chaos would begin. Then it was time for me to fly back to Cape Town. I set up this studio along with a South African team. I shot a film where we gave away 20,000 shoes to kids in need. We got 20 million views on this video. Success. Then back to Greenville to shoot Mr. Beast and Darren on a blue screen for 3D comps. Back to Cape Town to check in on Gabby and the pregnancy. <laughs> I wanted a boy. <laughs> Then to Cambodia to give away 2,000 prosthetics to amputees in need. Then back to South Africa to check on Gabs as well as where I lost a bet and how to get Darren's name tattooed on my shoulder. And then back to Greenville, North Carolina and did some yoga. Then to a remote island in Colombia to power it and set up Wi-Fi and a bakery where I fell in a river filled with crocodiles. Then back to Cape Town where I broke my wrist. Gotta go to Kenya in three days. Then to Kenya to give away a bunch of e-bikes to water delivery men and I capsized another boat. Then back to Cape Town where it was getting super close to the birth. So I quickly flew to the Philippines to a children's hospital where we paid for 150 surgeries. And then back to Cape Town just in time for the birth. It happened on the 18th of June, 2023, which was Father's Day, and that's just something you can't script. Gabs gave birth to the perfect little boy named Seth. And that brings me to today, what I've learned working for Mr. Beast over the last eight months. Five hidden secrets he has taught me to make anything go viral even philanthropy videos, which have in the past been described as boring, they've been described as fatiguing. Before taking this job, most of the people told me that this just wasn't gonna work. Again, just for the record, I am still the current Chief Creative Officer of Beast Philanthropy. I'm just taking some time off a month or so to spend some valuable time with my son. Before I tell you the five hidden secrets Mr. Beast has taught me on how to make literally any video go viral, I wanna tell you more about Brew bar. The brew bar was made in collaboration with House of Macadamias, an incredible company with a bunch of people I now consider really close friends. But most importantly, they are the best tasting nut of all time. It's true. So technically with the brew bar, we're kind of cheating because macadamias are just so tasty so you can add anything to it and it still tastes great. 
This has been spoken about by Joe Rogan, House of Macadamia, Lex Friedman, House of Macadamias, and more. Yeah. I'm no health nut. <laughs> <laughs> But the brew bar contains rare omega-7s, which makes your skin glow and helps with fat loss. It increases gut health, it is super low carb, it has heart healthy fats, and it is fully plant-based. Oh, and it has a shit ton of caffeine. Not too much, but just enough to give you a really good kick. Ah, okay, my bad. So click on the link in the top line of the description to buy yours now, because the first hundred people to buy two boxes of brew bars get a free variety pack of additional House of Macadamia bars, as well as free shipping. And furthermore, if you use the code BREW, I'll be donating 100% of the profits to Beast Philanthropy. Okay, as promised, here are the five never taught before secrets to going viral Mr. Beast taught me while working with him. Collaborate versus compete. Even though he is the most followed individual on YouTube, he still never lets us get to his head. He understands that he is still young and does not know everything. Oftentimes he leans on multiple mentors in different fields of his company, whether it is business, storytelling, branding and marketing, psychology, etc. He understands that he can no longer do it alone and that's why he has more than 200 employees. But remember that he started all alone in his bedroom many years ago with a super shitty camera. Jimmy often invites other YouTubers around to Greenville whether they are highly followed or have a micro audience that he sees an X factor to learn from. He values others' opinions. I won't lie, but before I started working there, I had a completely different idea of Jimmy. I just thought he was the kind of person that told people what to do and how to do it. Even with an unfathomably brilliant mind, he takes advice from pretty much anyone. And on the other side of the coin, he also gives back by helping grow tons of others' channels by collaborating with him. But he constantly makes time to be involved in other creators' videos, whether it's short or longer form. At the end of the day, the reason he is, with no argument, the best in the world is because he never stops learning and he never lets himself believe that he is indeed the best. Virality is not an accident, it's a skill. As creators, we often blame the algorithm for not going viral or for videos performing poorly to your standard. I know I do. It's usually the videos that I think are the best. My best videos get the least amount of views. And being friends with a lot of other creators in the space, this is like one of the most common things with most of us. Although the algorithm does have a major part to play in the virality of your content, it is not the be all and end all. At the end of the day, tough pull to swallow here. If your video did not perform well, it's on you, not on the algorithm. One is that your shitty title doesn't correlate with your thumbnail, which doesn't correlate with your first sentence of your video. Two, you can't judge the performance based on your CTR, which is your click-through rate. This does have a minor role to play, but it is not as important as AVD, which is your average view duration, as well as the engagement, which are likes, comments, and shares. But what counts the most is how many people click from the end of your video onto another one. This is super important. If you are the reason for someone staying on YouTube for longer, YouTube will favor that. Three is dubbing in multiple languages. This is a no-brainer. Basically, the more languages your videos are dubbed in equals the more amount of views you're gonna get. Four, something known as the churn. This means sticking to an exact upload schedule at the exact time. We have worked out that every 21 days works for the Beast Philanthropy channel, while Jimmy is in the process of testing weekly when he can. But he always uploads at the same time on the same day. And lastly, the length of the video. As long as the video is over eight minutes and one second long, this gives YouTube the ability to place two ads throughout the video, which it obviously prefers over one. Identifiable characters. Throughout all of Mr. Beast's videos, there are the same characters. This helps the audience develop personal relationships with not just Mr. Beast, but his supporting cast as well. They add the additional X factor and help with the banter. This also reaches a wider audience as there are so many more character types to relate to. You can also play around with using the most liked character later in your video to up the AVD as there is an expectation to see him or her in the video. Many YouTubers use this technique to drive the story forward. A character gives us the reason to care. Each time we see one of these characters in the videos, we feel more involved in the main character's life as we somewhat understand what it is like to be his or her friend. By doing this, it definitely makes your videos easier to make as there's less pressure on you to act alone.
make movies to make money to make more movies. This is something that Walt Disney said, but also an ethos that Jimmy lives by, as well as myself. If the purpose of your content is to make the best videos possible, you have to do whatever it takes financially, even if it means using your entire budget. Obviously outside of what you need to pay for your day-to-day -day expenses or your monthly overheads. Basically to pay for anything you need to outsource. The best investment you can make in the creative industry is in your personal brand. Story equals retention. The number one rule I have is that story comes first. However, story is a very misunderstood term. Stories have to have four elements. One, identifiable characters. Two, significant moments. Three, authentic emotions. And four, specific details. You have to ask yourself, what is the story that you're trying to tell? What is the emotion that you're trying to convey? How are you going to convey this emotion to the audience? And Jimmy has started to adapt and evolve his content by adding more story to it. Previously, although his philanthropy videos had great ideas, they lacked in story as well as aesthetic. One of the reasons he brought me onto the philanthropy channel was to try and convey the emotion that these films deserve to have, to actually make the audience feel something. Jimmy is now trying to bring more of the storytelling approach into the main channel videos. Developing a story will not only create a more complete video, but it will also help build retention. Storytelling techniques like foreshadowing and conflict allow the audience to stay engaged until the end of the film. This also gives his videos more structure. And at the end of the day, a good story just makes the videos so much more pleasant to watch and will make your content stand out from all the others on YouTube. If you got to the end of this video, please let me know by writing brew bar or something about the brew bar in the comments below and I'll be giving away $1,000 to one lucky person that comments that below. Again, a huge, huge shout out to House of Macadamias for making the brew bar possible. Click on the link below to purchase yours now. Like, click on it right now. Purchase yours. Other than that, don't forget, you're awesome brew and I'll see you soon for a new video. But for now, you can keep up to date with me and my missions on the Beast Philanthropy channel. Bye.